So the Mueller report was officially released. It's, of course, a, a redacted version, but nonetheless, um, we get the gist of it now. So the bar summary of the report came out not too long ago, and then now the redacted version of the report came out. And as I just said in the intro to the show here, if you went on Twitter in you know the, the wake of this report coming out for like the next two days... Twitter was just a toxic waste dump. <laughs> yeah, it was it was rough being on political Twitter in those two days. You look around and you're like, this is this is not uh, this is not enjoyable. So I want to go ahead and give you um, a solid breakdown here of the findings of the report. Uh, in order to do that, let's go to this uh, article in Mediaite. We have known for weeks that the report would not result in any charges against the president thanks to Attorney General William Barr's summary, which reported, one, that Mueller did not find evidence of a conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia, and two, that Mueller declined to draw a conclusion on obstruction of justice. Barr made that decision for him, announcing the president would not be charged with obstruction. Nonetheless, the full report, which is the result of a nearly two-year investigation that has captivated the United States, rocked the political world upon its release, given the trove of information contained within. Um, here are the top seven takeaways of the report. Number one, the investigation did not establish a criminal conspiracy. Barr's conclusion that the investigation did not find evidence of a criminal conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia was confirmed in Mueller's report but the picture the special counsel painted was less rosy than the attorney general. Uh, here's the key paragraph from the executive summary of the collusion section of the report. Although the investigation established that the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure that outcome, and that, camp and that the campaign expected it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts, the investigation did not establish that members... Uh, of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. The report did outline some indirect possible coordination between Trump and Russia, uh, including his statement in July uh, 2016. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 Clinton emails that are missing. I think you probably, I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Within approximately five hours of Trump's statement, the Mueller report states, Russian intelligence targeted for the first time Clinton's personal office. Number two, Mueller did not charge Trump with obstruction, but he couldn't exonerate him. Mueller's report uh, established early on that it planned to follow Justice Department guidelines against indicting a sitting president. And while there were issues with bringing a case on obstruction, the report was clear that it did not exonerate the president. The report recounted 10 episodes involving the president and potential obstruction of justice before concluding, uh, because we determined not to make a, a traditional prosecutorial judgment, we did not draw ultimate conclusions about the president's conduct. The evidence we obtained about the president's actions and intent presents difficult issues that would need to be resolved if we were making traditional prosecutorial judgment. Uh, at the same time, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. Based on the facts and the uh, applicable legal standards, we are unable to reach that judgment. Accordingly, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Barr uh, ultimately made the decision for Mueller, announcing that the DOG, DOJ would not prosecute the president for obstruction. Number three, Mueller's team was unsatisfied with Trump's written answers. Mueller's report said Trump's written answers in response to their questions were, quote, inadequate as well as, quote, incomplete or imprecise. Now, they didn't uh, actually go on to question Trump face to face for a variety of reasons that they lay out, but they do say they don't think his answers were adequate, even though they didn't have the face to face interview with him. Number four, this is probably the most interesting. Trump thought he was fucked. Trump's first reaction to learning from then Attorney General Jeff Sessions that a special counsel was being appointed. Oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm fucked. He proceeded to scream at Sessions for not protecting him, sparking bitter animosity 
that would flare up in public until Sessions left the DOJ in 2018. He later added, Everyone tells me if you get one of these independent councils, it ruins your presidency. It takes years and years, and I won't be able to do anything. This is the worst thing that ever happened to me. Number five, Trump tried really hard to stop the investigation. He was saved by his staff. The report is packed with countless instances uh, of Trump trying to shut down the probe in ways that would have completely screwed him. His staff, fond of ignoring his insane impulses, saved him on more than one occasion. Mueller's investigation found multiple acts by the president that were, incap- that were capable of exerting undue influence over law enforcement investi- investigations, including the Russian interference and obstruction investigations. One such instance, he asked former White House counsel Don McGahn to have Mueller fired. He also asked Corey Lewandowski uh, to have Jeff Sessions, then the attorney general, to limit the scope of the investigation. Both staffers wisely refused, and McGahn in particular resigned, telling colleagues Trump simply asked him to do too much crazy shit. Number six, Mueller leaves the door open to Congress on obstruction. While Mueller did not reach a conclusion on obstruction and Barr ruled out a DOJ case against the president, there's one graph in the report that pundits are focusing on as a potential wink to Congress. The conclusion that Congress may apply the obstruction laws to the president's corrupt exercise of the powers of office accords with our constitutional system of checks and balances and the principle that no person is above the law. In a lengthy passage that follows, the report lays out congressional authority to conduct an obstruction probe, one that could lead to impeachment proceedings. And then number seven, Sarah Sanders lied when she smeared James Comey to the White House press corps. Yeah, that, I don't know why they added that for number seven. Um, They go on to say like, yeah, this isn't, like the other things, because we know Sarah Sanders lies all the time about everything, so that's not really a surprise. Now, I'm going to add, on top of what uh, media I said here, I went through the report, and um, I just want to give you some of the other things that I think are important takeaways that they didn't include in this article. So, even when it came to lower-level administration officials like Carter Page and George uh, Papadopoulos, they didn't they couldn't establish collusion with the Russian government, even for them. And some of the anti-Russiagate crowd had argued like, oh, even though I think there, this is mostly much ado about nothing, there is a chance they get somebody like Carter Page or, you know, or George Papadopoulos on some attempts to directly collude with the Russian government. Mueller did not get anybody, no matter how low level the staff, or high level, on colluding with the Russian government. But what's interesting is, in the report, they talk about how they were looking into George Papadopoulos, they were investigating him to see if he has Israeli ties, and he was doing collusion with Israel. Well, that's interesting. Um, And then also, even the worst actors in in this whole saga, which, you know, I would argue is probably Michael Flynn and uh, Paul Manafort, those are the obvious ones, Um, he wasn't able to get them for collusion with the Russian government. And many of the bombshell stories that the media ran with and were giant for like two or three days, those turned out to be totally untrue. Like, for example, the allegation that Manafort met with Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy in the UK multiple times. They never, that was just totally untrue and could even be made up. And in fact, I think The Guardian originally ran that story and there's been no retraction, even though now we know that's uh, completely uh, untrue. Now, Here's the interesting uh, fallout from this. You have people are now saying, so originally, you know, Democrats were saying, oh, we're going to get them on collusion and then we could do impeachment proceedings. Well, they didn't get them on collusion. The Mueller report did not get them on collusion. But now, since Mueller kind of left the door open and said, I'm not exonerating him on obstruction of justice, but I'm also not saying he's guilty, um... There's a lot of people now who've just, who've gone full bore in the direction of, specifically over the issue of obstruction, we should, you know, do impeachment proceedings. Uh, Now, so the first question is, do we think he actually obstructed justice? Well, my answer is, yeah. Uh, I mean, when he fired Comey and he admitted on TV, like, yeah, I'm doing it because this Russia investigation is a hoax and it's fake and I don't like it. Like, that's one example, but there's countless examples, and they even, again, the Mueller report itself establishes that 
he kept telling his high level staffers to basically obstruct justice <laughs> and they were they were like yes sir we're right on it and then they wouldn't do it but like all of that those are all attempts at obstruction of justice so i think you definitely can make a case that he obstructed justice i don't even think that's a difficult conclusion to reach i think it's rather obvious but then the other question becomes okay but was the reason trump did that is it because he was trying to cover up fundamental crimes like cover up collusion or was he doing that because he hated the investigation and resented it and actually thought it was a hoax and a witch hunt and should have never started in the first place now from a legal perspective i'm not sure that matters i'm not sure it matters what you know specifically um what the motive was but i will tell you that the failure to establish intent was the whole crux of why Mueller couldn't say definitively, like, yes, he obstructed justice. Because in order, uh, I think, to, to demonstrate that and to make a, a solid conclusion on it, you would have to establish the intent. And he couldn't do it because it's unclear whether or not Trump was basically obstructing because he's a giant idiot and he thought the whole investigation was dumb in the first place. And so he didn't think there was any issue with trying to stop an investigation that he doesn't think should have happened in the first place. Or if it was a situation where it was like, no, I'm, I'm obstructing justice because I am trying to hide something. Um, which then leads to the other thing, which I thought was the most interesting finding, which is Donald Trump saying, I'm fucked. This is the end of my presidency. Now, some people are using this and arguing, well, then, you know, that's game, set, match. That means there was obviously collusion with the Russian government. But my takeaway from that is quite different. My takeaway from that is, he had no idea how broad the investigation was going to be. And the reason why Donald Trump thought he was fucked is because he's a career criminal. Like, it's not that hard to figure out. And I've said it a zillion times on this show, and I'll continue to say it. I think Donald Trump is guilty of, you know, uh, tax evasion, tax fraud, bank fraud, money laundering. Um, in fact, in his Panama hotel, there's evidence he's done money laundering for the mafia. Um, and... Listen, there's just there's countless examples of him doing nefarious criminal acts. Um, I think he's seriously a career criminal. And I think that the investigation in the Southern District of New York is going to indict him when he's no longer president. I think that it because, again, it's an open question. Can you indict a sitting president or not? Um, and right now, Mueller's saying, I'm just going to uh, go to the default position here, which is you can't indict a sitting president. I'll leave it up to Congress to impeach if they want to impeach. But when Trump is no longer president, they absolutely can indict him. And I think the Southern District of New York will do that. And I think they'll do that over various financial crimes. Um, and I think those financial crimes you're going to see are broad. I think there's an array of financial crimes that will make the average person's jaw hit the ground. And they'll be like, whoa, I didn't know that you know, all of that went on and all of that was stuff that Trump's been doing for decades. And if I'm Donald Trump and I hear that there's a special investigation into me, knowing all the crimes he's committed it, throughout his entire career and his entire adult life, of course he's going to think he's fucked. And by the way, I think he is fucked and he'll get nabbed by the Southern District of New York when he's no longer president. I'm convinced. I made the prediction that Mueller wouldn't find collusion. I was correct about that. And I also made the, the prediction that the Southern District of New York is going to indict him when he's no longer president. I think I'm still correct about that. And so uh, we'll see. And so I, I don't think, because again, some people are taking that part of the story where he says, oh my God, I'm fucked. This is the end of my presidency. And they're drawing a line from that to, well, obviously guilty of collusion because he's saying I'm fucked. So that's a guilty conscience. So obviously he thinks he's going to get me for the collusion I did. But no, the I'm fucked, I think, is just in regards to he thought Mueller was going to uncover all of his financial crimes and that would bring him down. Um, but I think that the Southern District of New York, who are actually doing those specific investigations on those on those broad financial crimes, I think they actually will bring him down. So um, that's why I think he said the I'm fucked thing, because he has a guilty conscience, because he's a career criminal. So both of those things can be true. That Mueller found no evidence for collusion. That is true. And it's stated over and over and over in the report. But then it's also true, true Trump thought he was fucked. And the reason he thought he was fucked is because he's a career criminal. So uh, he should think he's fucked because at some point he will be fucked. Um, so now I'm going to do a separate segment getting into the impeachment question. 
uh, because it is a long conversation to have. But bottom line is, if you want to say, hey, on principle, we should impeach Donald Trump because we think he obstructed justice, that's a fair point. But my only counter that would counter to that would be you have to like your only argument is on principle. Because I think all of the intangibles and the fallout from an impeachment proceedings would massively help Donald Trump in 2020. Massively. I want to go through some specific points that I highlighted as I went through um, the breakdown of this report from Mediaite. They said, although the investigation established that the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and worked to secure that outcome, the campaign expected it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts. The investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. So that's another part of the report that people are going, ah, good enough, right? Russia wanted him elected. Game, set, match. But I think what people don't understand people who aren't like, you know, really eating, sleeping and breathing politics and haven't been following this stuff for a long time. That part was obvious and it was obvious for a variety of reasons, but probably the most important reason is Donald Trump had said repeatedly on the campaign trail he wanted to stay out of Syria. He didn't want to get involved in Syria at all, whereas um, Hillary Clinton was saying the opposite. She was saying, no, we should be involved in Syria. And so... For uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russian government to say, yeah, we kind of prefer Trump, that's just, you file that under the duh category. And for a position as simple as, he wants to stay out of Syria, he says he does, she doesn't, that's it right there. Like, that's everything. Now, he ultimately didn't stay out of Syria. He got us into Syria, and in fact, we're permanently there, so he's escalating, which I think is terrible. I wish he did stay out of Syria. But on an issue like that alone, you could have Putin and the Russian government say, we prefer Donald Trump. But even more importantly than that, in the election between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, you know who um, Putin supported? Obama. Why? Simply because Obama wasn't in favor of the Cold War rhetoric, and Mitt Romney was, and Mitt Romney was more hawkish on the Russian government, and Barack Obama wanted a more hands-off negotiation compromise approach to the Russian government, where we reset and we uh, make sure we work towards peace. So, for me, you know, j just to put it on the record here, and I think all you already know that, I agree with Obama on the issue of Russia. I agree with Obama more than I agree with Mitt Romney. And I agree with Trump on the campaign trail more than I agree with Hillary on the campaign trail when Hillary was trying to be hawkish towards Russia and Donald Trump was just wanted to be like a traditional paleoconservative isolationist. He said, I don't want to get involved in the rest of the world. I just want to stay here, so I want to stay out of Syria. Now, again, ultimately, Trump did not follow through with that. I wish he did. He did get us involved in Syria and kept us there and escalated and we're staying there permanently. But bottom line is, I think that that's the reason why it's obvious that Putin would have preferred Trump in the same way Putin preferred Obama. And I don't think that's a scandal. I don't think that's a scandal at all. I think that's just standard geopolitics. And for people to act like that's evidence of collusion, when in the same fucking paragraph, it says at the end um, that, no, this is a quote. The investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. So, yeah, the end paragraph of the thing that people are pointing to, like, aha, makes the opposite point of what they think it makes. And also the thing about, oh, he said to Russia, like, oh, hack Hillary's emails, and then they did it five hours later. That's another thing that undermines their point. Because if Donald Trump was colluding with the Russian government and, and secretly having direct connections... He wouldn't have to fucking casually say it in a press conference. Like, he just, he said it in the open in a press conference because he's a dipshit and he would take anything that politically uh, advantages him, he'll take it. So he was just saying it and he didn't fucking know they were actually going to do it. Now, do I think he would object on principle to them doing it? No. But by the same token, Hillary didn't object when uh, Ukraine was giving him, was giving her dirt on Trump and his team and that's what happened. So I don't, again, this is not something that I think is a big deal. Um, and I think it's totally separate from actual collusion because if he was really colluding, he wouldn't have to fucking say it in a press conference. And in the report, in the Mueller report, this is fascinating. They also go on to say Putin and his minions couldn't figure out how to get a line to the Trump people on the campaign trail. So even when they wanted to, like, oh, let's talk to them, they couldn't do it. 
because they had trouble finding a line to his campaign. I mean, uh, guys, come on. The idea that this this dumbass and his merry band of gangster idiots, like they were geniuses and they somehow were doing this like, you know, Tom Clancy level novel Manchurian candidate thing. It's honestly goofy. In my heart of hearts, I thought, hey, maybe when this report is released, we could finally get past this and move on to Democrats focusing specifically on the very important issues that will help the people. Medicare for all, free college, living wage, ending the wars, Green New Deal, legalize marijuana, and we can hammer away on these things. But no, I think that the, unfortunately, this conversation really isn't going to go in the direction that I desperately want it to go because now they've dropped the collusion part where people were mostly harping away on collusion, and now it's just morphed into, well, let's just talk about the obstruction endlessly, and let's maybe start impeachment proceedings, which keeps the conversation nailed down on this topic, which I don't think is a good thing. And also, we already know the main argument that Trump and his people are going to make. And I hate to say it, but I think it will resonate with the American people when he makes the argument, you're going to come after me for obstruction of justice, when Mueller said there was no collusion, so you're going after me for obstruction, uh, obstructing something where there was no original crime. So how could it be obstruction if there was no collusion? So I think that that's the argument that Trump and his team will make, and even the other Republicans will make, and I think that that will ultimately help him. Because it's very similar to, um, you know, Bill Clinton, when he lied about getting the blowjob from Monica Lewinsky... And then they, you know, started impeachment proceedings and they said, well, he lied under oath. But the argument from the Clinton people was like, well, listen, if you're lying about a question that shouldn't have been asked in the first place, you're, you're nitpicking here and you're splitting hairs and you shouldn't be. And Bill Clinton's approval rating went up. So I think that can happen with Trump, whether or not Democrats want to admit it. But if they were to focus on the important issues, there's no way his approval rating would bounce back. There's no way you'd be giving him a solid argument. It would be the opposite. You can absolutely destroy him and obliterate the Republicans in the, in the next election. So that's my breakdown of the Mueller report. Um, it was interesting. It was certainly interesting. But I don't think we'll be seeing the end of this conversation at any time in the near future.